To determine who deals, cut the deck. Low card deals. It is a disadvantage to be the dealer in this game. That is why the low card has to deal. Whoever is determined to be the dealer must deal 10 cards to each player. When you first look at your hand, it'll be a bit of a mess. You'll need to take a second to organize your cards according to meld. Let's take a moment here to explain what a meld is. There are two types of melds. There's what's called a set, which is a three or a four of a kind, such as the three eights in the top, or a run, such as the 10 jack queen down below. A run has to be the same suit and it has to be at least three cards. Heading back to the game, we can see that both players have organized their hands according to the melds they've been dealt. Uh, you can see that the dealer isn't starting with a very good hand. They have a couple potential melds that are sets, but other than that, there's not too much for them to work with. The non-dealer, or the player at the top of the screen, has a much better start. They're starting off with a meld of three sixes and a possible meld of three nines. They've also started off with the possibility of a straight. So their hand is much better and they have some more options to work with. Play begins by taking the top card and flipping it up to become the discard pile. The non-dealer has the first choice as to whether or not they want to take that card. If they do, they must exchange it for a card in their hand, and that card becomes the new discard pile. If the non-dealer passes, the dealer gets the choice to pick up that card and do the same. They may exchange it for a different card in their hand. That's why it is an advantage to be the non-dealer in Jin, because you'll get that free turn at the beginning of the game. If both players pass on picking up that first discard, then the game begins with the non-dealer drawing from the draw pile. Now normal play may begin. The non-dealer chooses to draw from the draw pile rather than take the discard. They will keep the six, creating a meld of four sixes, and they choose to discard the eight of clubs. The dealer chooses to take the eight of clubs, creating a meld of three eights. Play like this continues until one player either goes gin or knocks after having a value of less than 10 in Deadwood. Now is a good time for me to explain what going gin means and what Deadwood is. Let's take a look at an example. In this hand, the player has just gone gin. They have discarded the final card from their hand and exclaimed, gin. Their hand is made up of a meld of four sixes, a meld of three sevens, and a meld that is a run of Jack, Queen, King of Clubs. This is the most desirable ending for a player to have in a round of gin. What differentiates gin rummy from straight gin is that a player can also end the round before they have a gin hand. In this example, the player has a deadwood value of nine in their hand, so they would be allowed to knock ending the round. Of course, along with that, you are hoping that your opponent has a lesser value of Deadwood in their hand. Because if they don't, they will undercut you and earn more points. Let's go ahead and fast forward to the end of this game. Here's a good example of what two players' hands might look like towards the end of a round. At this point, the player at the top of the screen has a Deadwood value of 5. The player at the bottom of the screen has the Deadwood value of 9. The top player is confident that they can end this hand and win. So they draw their card and discard it face down. This notes that the end of the hand is occurring and it is time to compare cards. 
Before we move on to how this hand is scored, let's talk about what each card is worth. In Gin Rummy, and many games in the Rummy family, aces are worth 11, jacks, queens, and kings are worth 10, and the numbered cards are worth the value of the number on the card. All right, let's head back to the game and see how these two players did. The player at the top of the screen who knocked only had a deadwood value of five. The player at the bottom had a deadwood value of nine. So the player at the top of the screen won this hand. To figure out their score, you take the difference in deadwood. Nine minus five is four. The player at the top of the screen scored four points. The player at the bottom of the screen scored zero. But what would happen if the player who ended the round actually had more in Deadwood? Well, that is not good for the player who knocked. If you see in this example here, the player who ended the round had five and their opponent had three. This is called being undercut. The player who knocked and ended the hand actually lost. Their opponent would score 20 points for undercutting them plus the difference in Deadwood, which would be two. So in this hand, the non-knocking player would actually score 22 points. Remember, it is possible and more desirable for a player to go gin in this game, just like in straight gin. If a player goes gin, they earn 20 points plus the value of their opponent's Deadwood. Play like this will continue with the winner of the hand dealing the next round. The game is over once a player reaches 100 or more points. As with all card games, there are many different rules and variants for each game, as well as how to keep score. These are